Hi, my name is Andrew. What you're going to be watching is a tutorial that can be found on our premium courses. The title is Why I Should Use True Stops When I Should. This is a response video that is based on a question asked by one of our premium courses subscriber. What are premium courses? Premium courses are photography courses, e-learning courses that you can subscribe to where lessons are pushed to you every week of every genre of photography. It covers camera settings, compositions, shooting products, stock photography, landscape, anything about photography and you get weekly lessons. And you know what's really more amazing about the premium courses? It's the subscription fees now. It's undergoing a tremendous offer of just 25 US dollar the whole year. I bet you no other e-learning sites is that affordable. Because the usual price is 120 per year. Subscribe to it and I hope I get your support. But in the meantime, enjoy this tutorial. Action! Photographer and premium courses subscriber Eugene Gerstel wrote in the discussion column asking why is it uncommon to use true stops and why is it looked down upon? Very good question. I appreciate it when subscribers write in the discussion column. That way we can learn more things. Because sometimes as your trainer and a veteran photographer, I wouldn't exactly know what you would want to learn. So that's the reason why we have the discussion column and also the gallery section where you can talk about it. If you scroll down and you have a Facebook account, if you're logged into Facebook while you're using our website, you can also have discussion there. Leave me notes, tell me what you want to learn. Though I may not be able to answer all questions, but I'll surely have my producers picked out questions that are useful and we will learn about them. So why is it uncommon? to use true stops. Well, it's actually pretty common for people not using true stop, especially beginners. But reason number one why you should be using true stop, it's easier to calculate light. True, you calculate light as you move on into professional lighting, induced light. Let me give you an idea. This is called the lighter's cheat sheet. We use the lighter's cheat sheet to estimate how far to put the light and at that distance what is the power of the light should be based on the given aperture value that we want to shoot. It works on a few ways. If you tell me the f value that you want to shoot, for instance if you tell me that you want to shoot at f16, then I know I should put my flash at 2 feet away at the power of 1 over 8 at the ISO 200. Now that is if you want f16. If you want f11, I would either move the power down of the flash to 1 over 16 if I still want to shoot at 2 feet. Or I can move the light 3 feet away. Now let me give you a scenario how you calculate light. Example, you have your flash 2 feet away. But this time, the flash power instead of 1 over 8 like lighters cheat sheet, the power is 1 over 32. And you do not want to go up more on the power or reduce the power. And this will definitely be underexposed if you were to shoot at f16. So how do you know what's the new value? Simple, if you start with f16, two stop down will always be f8. That is why it's easier to calculate light if you use true stop. Imagine if I use f13. Hell, I don't even memorize non-true stops. See how difficult that is? And that brings us to point number two, which is there are less true stops and there are more non-true stops. So if you remember true stops, you don't need to remember non-true stops because human eyes or your viewers can only perceive the differences in brightness if it is two times or more. Two times is one stop. So if you're talking about less than two times, let's assume one third of a stop from 6.3 to 7.1, it's pretty much unperceivable. So that is why photographers move 
the value of ISO or aperture or shutter speed by a full one stop. So all you need to remember are the true stops, which are less compared to the none. And that explains why commercial professional photographers only memorize the true stop and they always move up one stop or one stop down or two stop up or two stop down or three stops. They'll be easier. Well, of course, there are times that we have to do one third or two third of a stop, even though they are not perceivable, but they make a big difference. So we will decide where we want to sacrifice. So most of the time when it comes to a shoot, I'm given an F value to shoot by my clients or agencies. They tell me this shot, we want F11. So I just follow or I may recommend. The F value is important because it's the one parameter that really shows the depth of field. So if there's any value that I would sacrifice to look non-true stop, that would be my ISO or my shutter speed. I'll put more priority on the F values. So summary, second point, it's easier to memorize all the true stop rather than the non-true stop. And adjusting your light should be done at one full stop or two full stop. Rarely you do one third or two third, even though you do them. And thirdly, elegant. When you use true stops, the number look planned. Let me give... Sorry. Hello? Yep. Now I called you. Right. I want to ask you whether you want to have lunch tomorrow. What time? How about 1.37? What, what do you mean weird time? Yeah, 1.37. Oh, okay. You prefer 1.46? She hung up on me. This is what I mean by elegant numbers. You notice that when you invite somebody for lunch, you see the 1 o'clock or 12 o'clock. These are beautiful numbers. When you call somebody and say, hey, let's have lunch at 1.37, it makes you sound odd. So it's the same thing, doing a photo shoot at f6.3 or f7.1, those are not elegant numbers. So in summary, these are the reasons why you should be using true stop. Number one, as you move on into advanced exposure and adding lights of one, two, three, four, five. Example, we use sometimes 13 lights. You need to calculate exposure and calculating them with true stops are easier. Number two, there are less true stops to memorize. And if you memorize non-true stops, there are more non-true stops for you to memorize. So memorizing true stops, going up and down, it's easier. And thirdly, it's more elegant. So if you ever win a photo contest and the exif info is shown behind you with the photo, it looks elegant. It looks like you go to It looks like you go to school. Hello? Yeah, 137. What's wrong with 137? So you're going to have lunch? So I hope you like this tutorial. If you do, please head on to our premium courses. That's the website. Take advantage of this because it's still under promo 25 US dollar per year until the end of April. I'll see you soon.